We're in the Paradise Point cabin. If you can look at these walls, they have a log face on them. And I'll take you back to the mill and show you how we did these. It has a simulated hand-hewn look. You can see the score marks here. They show up really well. And we have attached these with glue and finished nails. And you can see uh, some screws I put up here and down here. You can see there's a little bit of glue that didn't get where it's supposed to be. But these are, are turning out nice. I put a, a piece in the corner to butt up against where I could just make a square cut here. Made it a lot easier to fit these. Okay, we're going to show you how we make these log faces that we've been using. I have a log here that we've already sawed two sides just like it would be a wall log. And we'll be able to get four faces off of this. We'll show you the peeling disc that Brother Wayne actually bought when we were starting his cabin and he was peeling logs with it. And we've discovered that it works pretty good for making a hue mark. Now this is the disc that we're using. This has got three blades on it. This is a seven or seven and a half inch disc. And it came from Estonia. It has the three blades and they're really sharp and it really throws some chips. We have lots of these chips around here. It kind of looks like feathers falling when, uh, when we're doing this. But we, we just take a log. This the same thickness is six inches thick for a wall log. And I'll score it with my ax just like I was going to hew with a broad ax. And then Brother Wayne will come along with the disc on this grinder. And he will put the, the mark, the hue marks in there. And it, I think it looks pretty good. This is the axe that Jared Lanham at Refiner's Forge made for me. And I really like using it for making these score marks because of the, the width of the blade. And I'm just going to score this like I was scoring a, a wall log. This leaves a, a nice hewn texture on there. And the next thing I'll do, I'll rip this face off with the sawmill and it'll be ready to go.
we're ready now just to repeat the process. We can get another face off this side, then we can flip it and get two faces off the other side. And sometimes when you're sawing like this, you need to, to keep your cant going straight to flip it and cut one off one side and one off the other. Sometimes you're getting closer to the heart and that will relieve tension in the grain and cause the, the cant or the log to bow. And so on some of these, we would cut from one side and then turn it over and get a face off the other side, which is probably what we'll do with this one. Okay, I'm ready to put these, these faces on here. And I'll show you what I'm doing. You can see I've got a board right here above the, the actual log face. And I've got them already cut to length. They'll come out here to the edge of the door opening. And I'll show you on the ends of these boards, I have a center mark. And I've also got that on the face. It's just a little tiny mark. And I can line that up on my layout in the corner. I have this corner piece, which is uh, about an inch and three quarter by inch and three quarters. It's nailed in the corner and I can run my faces against that. As I mentioned earlier, it just makes it a lot easier. I have on historical restoration, I had put some walls in like this and I made some log faces and I had to scribe against these and it was a pretty good ordeal. So we came up with this idea of just making a corner and just going against that where I could make just a, a straight cut with a skill saw. And when I cut these these edges here, I cut these on a, a five degree bevel so that this edge here actually is what's touching against the, the corner. And I've, I've got my mark here, my center mark. It's real faint, you probably can't see it. And I just barely can, but um, I've got it on there and I'll take my pencil and I'll make a little mark here, and a little mark here on the top, on the studs. And then I've got some wide, uh, they're about four and a half inches by a half inch thick. I can set up there and nail on to the studs and I'll fill in here over the studs and that'll give me something to anchor the, the faces to. I'm, I'm using F26 construction adhesive that I'm gluing everywhere and that will help to hold that on. I've, I've had to cut some grooves in the back because some of these had cupped on us and I, I can flatten them back out. This is the same thing that I did on the outside when I was putting the, the board and batten on around the kitchen walls. So I'll be able to pull that in good and tight. I'm just going to make a little guess mark for the center on that and here. And I have my mark that I just made. I'll make a little mark there right around the corner. I can make a little mark so that I can line this up. And I'm bringing this up above my mark just a oh, half inch or so. Now I'm just going to measure in between each one of these and, and cut a, a strip that's an inch and a half or so wide and nail on to that. I've got my little pieces cut here that will just set over the studs. I've got an old brush here. I'm just making sure I've got all the, well, I can hang on to it. Just making sure I've got all the dust off. I'm going to set this back up here, get it on the center line, and 
center mark. I'm just going to draw across the top of that. And across the bottom of it. That way maybe I can get the glue in the right place. I've already brushed the back side of this this face off so I'm ready to put it on now After I get these nailed on there, I'm taking some uh, torque screws and right over the stud in the chinking gap, I'm putting a screw in there and that kind of helps to pull out that, uh, that it helps pull that cup out. I know that I've got that up there tight because I see the glue squeezing out. It looks good. Now what I'll do here, I'll come back after I get all of these on and I'll take my sawzall and I'll just make a mark down through here and cut all these off. What I'm doing with these, I'm reversing the butts and tips just like it would be a real log wall this would have been a butt and this next one would be the tip up here and that kind of keeps the the chinking gap running somewhat uniform i've got my center mark here make a mark here again so i know where to put my my backing board which will which will hold the chinking in between the the uh the log faces. Now we can come back in between here and we can use the wire mesh that I've I've showed you before once when I was chinking the smokehouse. And I have just used uh, drywall screws before and just screwed them in and let them stick out a little bit so when you pack the, the chinking in there it'll go around that and then the head of the screw will help to hold the chinking in between the, the, the faces. So this is the last of the log faces that we have to put on. The reason we did this is because this kitchen area was something we decided to do after the, the main cabin, the log part was built. And we have hewn logs, which would have been the outside wall of a seawall. And we cut a doorway through there and we wanted this to match the hewn logs that uh, are exposed inside this kitchen area. And this is the easiest way to do it, was just to make faces and put over the wall. And then when we come back and chink all of this in between, it'll look just pretty much like the, the full logs on seawall. And we'll have a room that has the feel of a hewn log wall. I've got all of the hewn log faces, I guess you would want to call them, on. This is in the kitchen area. And I'm going to back up so you can see the window. I've already got it trimmed out. Now, when you put these faces on, 
you have to bear in mind that you've got to make it look like a true log wall. If you can see this log here that I'm pointing at, it's got the chinking gap here kind of in the center. The logs don't line up with each other. It's like they would actually be stacked in a corner. And so they uh, kind of butt in the middle of each other. Now what I did, I measured the center lines on seawall. I used that same measurement all through the building. And then I worked from that to make sure that the logs look like they're actually notched in. Now I realize I have a piece of wood here in the corner and that actually covers up part of the notch that I cut off of D wall to uh, be able to get that in there and, and hide the end of that cut notch. Up here at the top, I had a little bit of V edge tongue and groove left from when we did the roof on the, the log part of the building and that covers up the settling gap up there. These little short pieces are just nailed to the settling beam itself. If there's any more settling, it can come on down. We can still get in there to adjust it if we need to, but I really think that it's pretty much done all it's going to do. We're in the bathroom area, but this window is trimmed out and I ran the, the V edge tongue of groove all the way across up to the actual hewn outside face of seawall. I'm really pleased with the way this turned out. It's a lot of work. It's not something you're just going to do just in a short time, especially when you're doing the live edge to make it look like a true log. You have the butts and the tips you have to keep up with reversing them back and forth to match up what would actually be a true log wall.